Hi, my name is Tyler Mowry, and welcome to the Writer's Mind Podcast, episode 66. So today on the podcast, um, I want to talk about trying and failing and the element of moving from a person that is simply existing, going through life, being a person who, you know, does nothing mainly, and moving into that zone where you are actively heading in some sort of direction and you know, what that takes. Um, you know, I think that trying and failing is really, really frustrating. Uh, I have a story for you. So maybe I've told this before. I don't think I have. Um, when I was in college, uh, I co-wrote a 20-page short film that was this sort of contained ensemble cast story. It was supposed to take place at this cabin. Um, and it was... So I wrote it with a friend of mine, um, and then I was going to direct it, and I went ahead, and we we had this location, and it was like one state away, so it was like a four or five hour drive, uh, and then I started getting cast, getting crew, I started, you know, the whole logistical element of this, and this was a very low budget short, I think maybe in total I spent four to six hundred dollars on it which at the time I was broke and in college so it was a pretty good chunk of my money um and so uh I went ahead and we we shot this thing uh so I took the cast took the crew we all drove down um to this uh location that we had a state away and we were shooting it over two nights essentially so Day one of shooting, I think we started around, man, I don't know, um, something around like maybe 8 p.m. And then we wrapped at like 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. or something super early. And I was exhausted, right, because I, I was producing this whole thing. And even months before this, right, I was constantly stressed, constantly trying to get this together. I didn't have the money to really pay people, so everybody was kind of doing me a favor. I was running around. I also had a pretty tight deadline. Uh, we wrote this thing, I think, in like March, and then obviously school ended in May. And so we needed to, needed to get this thing shot before people had finals. And it was just a mess. And so... Finally, we get there and we're shooting this and it is just nonstop work all through the night. I go to bed so tired. I wake up the next morning um, or not, not the next morning. I woke up in the afternoon, like 2 p.m. or something like that. Got up and immediately I'm back at it trying to, okay, let's plan. We were starting back up shooting at like 6 p.m. I think it was because we had a couple scenes that took that took place like in the evening. And so, I mean, if I'm up at 2 and then we're shooting at 6, like if, if you've ever directed... Um, something, you know, especially something like small like that, you know, that is not a huge time. So I'm up, I eat and I am immediately back at this, um, getting everything rolling. And then we shot all from, you know, 6 PM or so all the way through the night. I think we wrapped at like 5 AM, maybe something like that. And then everybody went to sleep and I grabbed a couple exterior shots, uh, sunrise shots that I wanted to get for the short. And oh my goodness, I was so tired. I put so much time and effort into this. I finally get back. We get back to school, uh, get back to the college and I start going through footage, trying to make an assembly cut. And I hated everything we had. I mean, I had been so stressed for months working on this, all of it leading up to this extremely stressful weekend and to come back and look at what I had and just be so disappointed with it. Um, and I couldn't, you know, I wish I would have uh, paid an editor to go through and just get me a cut um, because it's possible that I get through that initial assembly cut and say, okay, maybe this isn't so terrible. And then, you know, I go from there, but I didn't have the money for that. And nobody wanted to edit this 20 page, which, you know, it ended up being like a 23 minute 
short um, for free. So I was just kind of out of luck and the project died. It died in the editing phase. And that was really frustrating. Um, I was glad that I pulled it off, but I was so frustrated that I didn't have the money to bring it to the finish line. And I also didn't have the motivation to, I was just so crushed because it wasn't even kind of what I wanted it to be. And, you know, I think you might be in a similar situation, you know, in the sense of you might have finished a screenplay and it, you get to the end and you're just like, wow, I hate this so much. Like, why do I want to do this? Or maybe you shot a short uh, and finished it and it wasn't what you wanted it to be. Or maybe you're doing a feature. That'd be fantastic. And, and you know, but you're frustrated with how it's going. Um, and, you know, it, it sucks. It sucks when that happens, right? And that's a huge part of the process of, you know, getting good at something is going through massive frustrating failures. And so there's an obvious reason why most people don't try to do anything, right? They save themselves a lot of grief and stress and heartache because they don't ever try. Now, obviously, the flip side of that is that they go through their entire life never actually trying, trying to do anything of value. And this is why, you know, people have midlife crises at 45 because they realize they've just done what they're told their whole life and never even thought for a second about what did they want their contribution to the world to be or what did they want to build for themselves. They never thought about that and then they're frustrated and they go and... (laughs) buy a Porsche or something, (laughs) you know, like, you know, it sucks, especially like if, if you become some sort of public figure, right? Like making yourself a public figure, then just to have people hate on you or disagree with you or constantly say that, you know, your ideas are garbage or that you're a fraud or whatever, that also sucks, right? But it is part of putting yourself out there and moving forward and saying, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. I want people to come with me because I believe that life really does operate like a video game in the sense that you can level yourself up, right? You can get stronger, you can get smarter, you can get better at tasks, at certain talents, uh, and, and you can move faster once you're getting better and better and better. And one of the things that has helped me is that like once you know you see progress that progress compounds and it compounds and it compounds and when you look around you realize that most people aren't moving at all and so i think when people think about like successful people or they think about people that are um you know really hustling or whatever they they think that this means that you have to be 24/7 every single moment of the day pushing towards something and that's of course not sustainable what is sustainable is just doing it again and again and again consistently in and out day in day day in and day out as you know and you miss days and you get on it and you get discouraged for a month and then you get back on it and you're not pushing as hard for 6 months and then you get back on it and but you you got some work done throughout that time you know like it's not about always being 100% there, motivated, pushing, getting 12 hours of work done. It's about moving the needle forward. All you have to do, this is actually on my whiteboard over here, or my blackboard, I guess, uh, over here. I have a um, this sentence that I just keep there to remind myself that all you got to do is not stop, right? The second that you stop and you really actually give up the thing that you're trying to do, that's when you die, Right, that's when your dream dies, or that's when what you want to do dies. And for some people, you can be pushing, and then you realize that oh, this isn't what I truly want to do. I want to do something different, and then you can, you know, adjust. Um, and that can be fine. Although starting from square one is, of course, uh, brings its whole litany of problems in and of itself. But if you really have a serious reason for why you want to do something, you can level up just by continuing to push forward and just by pushing and pushing a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, right? Like doing 20 minutes of work on something a day is way more work than most people are ever doing, right? Like think about this too. If you are 
wanting to be a screenwriter, which I know a lot of people that follow me are, um, and you just wrote one single page a day, just one page a day for one year, right? So at the end of the year, you have 365 pages, which roughly comes out to about three screenplays, right? When was the last time you wrote three screenplays in a year? Probably never. And so then you realize just moving the needle a little bit can make a huge world of difference. And imagine if you do that for three years straight. You're like, okay, three years, I'm just writing a page a day. Suddenly, you have this huge volume of work. You have nine screenplays done. Right? And so I think that people people really think that it has to be this... Um, it's you know, so binary in the sense that like you're either not doing it at all or you are giving every single thing up, sacrificing everything, not doing anything else except this one thing, 24, 7, 3, 6, 5. It's like you can, you, you don't have to be on that level of intensity. It's fun sometimes when you're there, right? You have those days or you have that week where you are just pushing right you're slamming it you're you're you know that's the that's the time you write a script in a week that's the time you you know you're pounding it you feel great um you know you get that short that short film shot and then other times you really don't care that much and all you're doing is like kind of outlining a script but you're moving forward right it's about that it's about continuing to move forward right that that actual continual progression year to year to year that is what people never get to right? People push hard on something for three months and then they quit and they do something else. They push for six months, they stop, they do something else. They go through college, they're like, this is what I want to do. I'm going to be this. I'm going to, I'm going to be a screenwriter. I'm going to do this. And they get out into the real world and then they go, oh man, it's really hard to sell a script, isn't it? I guess I'll, you know, do whatever else. And it's like, when you do this, it's like you start the journey over again and again and again and again, right? You get four years deep into something and then you go, oh, this isn't for me, just to start back at square one, not realizing that if you just put a little bit of effort in consistently over time, right? Putting in 30% effort every day is so much better than putting 100% effort for a week, right? That is what, I mean, even 10% effort every day versus 100% effort for a week. It's like the just pushing it forward, just pushing it forward, making, making doing something your baseline, making pushing a bit your baseline. That I think is, is so valuable. And I think that for me, you know, I've, I've had such waves of having times where I'm really crushing it and feeling, you know, uh, and, and really feeling like writing or really feeling like making YouTube videos and then having times where I'm lost in my writing or having times where I'm not sure what I should make my videos about and just, you know, feeling lost or feeling confused. And it's like the, what I have continued to do regardless of how I feel is just making whatever I need to do. I mean, like if you look at my YouTube channel, a lot of you will remember my YouTube channel for my best videos, right? You will remember my channel for the videos I did on structure. You'll remember my channel for writing a screenplay in two days. You'll remember my channel for, um, you know, my Shutter Island video. Um, this, these are the videos you'll remember my channel for. What you won't remember my channel for is the dozens of terrible videos I have. Dozens of videos where I was pretty checked out, but I made one and I put it out and I kept moving forward, right? And honestly, those are not as beneficial to you, but those are really the most beneficial videos to me because it's showing me that, look, it's about moving forward, right? I cannot allow my emotional state to constantly dictate what I'm doing or what I'm interested in or how or whether or not I'm going to complete a task. Like this, this is why people stop. They, they, they lose the, their emotional vigor for whatever the thing is. And rather than continuing to work until they find it again, they just move on. 
And then they allow their emotions to dictate every career decision that they ever made or just every decision of the, the, that they ever made. They, they base it solely on how they feel, right? And your emotions can kill you. They, they go and, you know, motivation comes and goes. Feeling good comes and goes. Like, you know, uh, feeling happy or satisfied with what you're doing it comes and goes it, even not even on a day-to-day or a week to week but a moment to moment right I mean how many times have you been writing a script and you're like ah oh, this is flowing I feel good I feel good I feel good you hit a scene and you can't write a single sentence and then suddenly you're like ah oh, I just can't do this. I'm not a writer. I can't write. I'm a fraud. It just comes and goes. And every time you lean into how you feel like that, it hurts you. Because you can't figure out why you're doing it. You can't find the real reason. You can't find, you know, just just that action to keep pushing forward. You can't find that part of you that gets you over that hump. He doesn't have any practice, right? Like, like the part of you that says, Nope, do it anyway. Nope, do it anyway. Right. That sort of discipline voice, that voice needs you to train it, to come out more and train it, to come out more and train it, to come out more and choose to listen to it again and again and again. Cause your emotions will always tell you to not do the things that you need to be doing. But once you see progress, right? Once you see progress, latch onto that. Hold on to that. Know that it hasn't been for nothing. Look at what you've been able to do. See clear progress. That's another reason I, I'm, I'm so focused on helping people find the problems in your story. Identify your story problems. Why? Because when you can see your mistakes and fix them, that is what progress feels like. That is what progress looks like, right? You can get that reward of saying, I am getting better at this. And so then when your emotions come out, you can take that emotion of, no, I am getting better at this. You can remember that and you can push against it and you can keep pushing. You know, I really do think like, you know, especially in the world that we live in where there are so many opportunities and so many ways that you can grow and you can find information and find knowledge. I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, you have access to more information than any other person in human history. People that did so much more than you did it with so much less information infinitely less information than you have right now and that's like the biggest key right is is figuring out the information that helps you move forward right and the information that changes your beliefs right one of the things that i try to instill is the belief that you can write and you can finish your script and you can find your problems. You just have to actually do that work, right? You tell yourself all of these other stories when really it's about doing the work or not doing the work. Choose to do the work. Stop acting like it's because you're a fraud or it's because whatever. You just got to do the work and it'll be wrong and then you'll fix it and then it'll be fine. And then you'll move forward and you'll get better. That's just how it works. And understand that you have so much opportunity in front of you. I mean, you really do. Like, you know, I, there may be people that are listening to this podcast that are in bad situations or or, or are, are in nations that, you know, aren't as stable or they don't have, you know, the same opportunities as I might have. And I understand that. And I'm not trying to belittle your situation or make light of it. But what I am telling you is that believing that you can do nothing because of your situation is not helpful to you. Or believing that... Other people who you see um, being successful started out better than you. That doesn't um, make your life better. Or that doesn't improve your world, right? Like, what's the most practical thought you can have? The most practical thought you can have is, I'm lucky to be alive and there are things that I can do to move forward and get what I want. That is productive, right? Right? And so, you know, I want you to be thinking about that. 
don't be thinking about what you don't have or, or, or what, what you were not given. Think about the fact that you're listening to this podcast, right? You're listening to me, somebody who is telling you, hey, just try and try, try day in and day out. Push forward. And even look, even if you don't ever write, right? If, even if it's not about screenwriting, it's not about any of that, right? If you're trying to make money or you're trying to help your family or you're trying to, whatever you're trying to do, it's, you have to try and then you can begin to learn when you realize you don't know everything and then go to the internet. The internet will tell you there's somebody on the internet with the information that you need. You just need to figure out what information you need and you figure out what information you need by starting towards where you want to go. So I hope this is helpful. I know this is, it sounds kind of like, I don't know, maybe like generic motivation. Uh, that wasn't the point, but um, uh, I hope this is helpful to you because there's so much to be done and you can really level up. Like life is a video game. You can change how you view the world, which then changes your external world, right? And changes what you can do, changes how you can build. So... I hope this is helpful to you. Thank you so much for subscribing to the Patreon. I'll see you guys next week.